Business intelligence tools like Dundas BI can help you visualize the quality of your processes in real time. Now, one tool that's often employed to do this is called a control chart. I'll give you the basic concept of this chart and show you how to do it in Dundas BI. This way, we can put you back in control. And speaking of control, my boss always says I'm a control freak, but I haven't decided yet if that's true or not. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. So what is a process control chart? It's basically a process improvement tool. You can use a control chart to understand if any given process that you're measuring is statistically in control. So why do you care? Control charts allow business leaders to clearly and consistently evaluate any given process's performance. In short, it'll help you understand if your performance requires attention or improvement. It's interesting. It's often said that an attempt to improve a process that's already in control can potentially lead to an overall degradation of that process's performance. So this is a way that you can get an indication of which processes you should look at and which you might just want to leave alone. Let's take a look at one of these charts by building the pieces from the ground up. A control chart is not a specific chart type, as you'd expect with like a pie chart or a bar chart, etc. It's a chart that starts as a simple line, measuring your process, plotted in order of time. In my case, I'm showing day numbers, but you could very well have full dates in here. Just make sure that whatever you have is chronological. What makes a control chart interesting are actually these statistical calculations that we overlay on top of it. Now, if you're new to Dundas BI, it contains a formula engine where you can enter your own formulas to augment and extend your data. And this is how we're going to build the control chart. I'm going to use this engine to add these calculations. And I'll show you the formula that I'm using for each so that you could follow along if you want. So first, we're going to start by calculating the average. No big deal here. Then we're going to find the population standard deviation and add it to the average. We want to add three of them. You'll see that Dundas BI does have a function to get you the population standard deviation, so it's very easy to do. Once we have this, this is what we call the upper control limit. We would also want to do the same thing but subtract three standard deviations from the average to get what's called the lower control limit. Just a quick note here, sometimes this will result in a negative number that makes no sense. For example, if you're looking at production totals, you can't have a negative total. So if your lower control limit ends up being below zero, you might just want to set it to zero. And that's it. We've got our basic control chart from here. The most basic way to read this chart is to see if any points fall outside of these control limits. If they are, your process might not be in control. You can look at the following three characteristics to help really understand if your process is in control once you have these calculated. Are most points near the average? Do you have few points near those control limits? And of course, no points beyond the control limits. You can also establish zones by calculating the first and second standard deviations from the average. These zones are unsurprisingly named zones A, B, and C, and we can use these to do what's called special cause analysis. In Dundas BI, there's a chart type called a range chart, and we can use it to create these colored zones. The range chart's really neat because you can instruct it on how to draw by defining range start and end. So with zone C as an example, one standard deviation from the mean can be calculated, and then we simply go back to the average. That's one series. Then we would create a second series from the average to negative one standard deviation. So you can just keep adding these ranges to calculate these zones. So why zones? Well, it really all comes down to the fluctuations that you're seeing. Are these fluctuations done by common causes or what's called special causes? A special cause is a pattern that's unusual or unexpected. Special causes can be found by looking for a few specific patterns in the data using these zones. So you've probably got a special cause if any of these are true. If you have two out of three consecutive points falling in zone A, that's a special cause. Four out of five consecutive points in zone B, or seven consecutive points in zone C. There's also a test called the rule of seven, 
And this test states that an out of control situation exists if one of the following is true. You've got seven points in a row above the average, seven points in a row below the average, or seven points in a row trending up, or seven points in a row trending down. So you can look for these patterns as well. As you can see, a lot of this is centered around patterns, and it's neat that you can use this for real analysis once you've put these formulas in place. A couple of other things. You might also see the term stratification. And this is using these charts, same idea as what I'm doing, except the data is colored differently or using different markers to distinguish different sources. For example, a production line may have different manufacturing shifts, and this will allow you to compare them separately. There is also a pattern test for stratification, but I'm not going to get into that here. Let's talk a little bit about how Dundas BI can augment this type of analysis. There's a bunch of benefits to this. So first of all, all of the data is available in real time. I can go into a BI tool once I've set it up with this type of display at any point and just see the data. I don't have to do anything. I can just examine my processes whenever I want. I can also choose the process that I want to visualize. So in the case of what I created here, I built something called a dynamic measure, which is a great way to switch data on the fly to look at different processes. You could, of course, have blown this out and just had all of them on one screen, but this is a nice condensed way to do it. Now, if you have specific tests or patterns that you need to look for regularly, you could also automate these with a BI tool. You could always write a simple script to check for any tests that you want to do and automatically highlight the results. Annotations are another great way to highlight and communicate results or simply store your thoughts. You can right click on any data point, select add note and type in a comment to review later. Really useful. Zooming and scrolling is also a great way to get a bit closer to the data, especially if you're looking for some of those common patterns that I mentioned and you might have a lot of values in here you want to see. And finally, collaboration. If you do see any insights and you want to share them with team members, simply exporting your dashboard or providing with a link is a nice way to do it. So as you can see, BI definitely adds a lot of value on top of this type of analysis. Now I know this is a pretty big topic and I've provided this in a pretty condensed manner, but I hope you can see some of the power here. There's a ton of general information on the subject available, so I definitely recommend you dig deeper if you do find this useful. If you do like this topic, I recommend digging a bit deeper into what you can do with formulas in Dundas BI. They're much more powerful than people assume, and there's some nice videos already on the topic. Specifically, check out Introduction to Formulas in Dundas BI for the basics, and extend your data with Dundas Script to get a bit more advanced. It's well worth the watch. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.